are three, not there were three that are one. Right. These three are one. Amen. Yes, amen. Now, as you know, many people get confused over this issue of the three persons in the Godhead. This really is not complicated. Mm -hmm. This does not mean that three persons are one person. That's not what, what the scriptures teach. That's, that's not who God is. One here does not mean the same. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, and they, they are unified in all things. Mm -hmm. They work in concert together, mm -hmm. never independently. Mm -hmm. You research that in the Scriptures, you'll Amen. find that yeah. they, they're Amen. all three working together mm -hmm. on the same thing, Amen. to the same end, for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. These three are one. There are three persons in the Godhead. And as you know, the word Godhead is a biblical word. Paul used this in Acts chapter 17. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone. And in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, For in him, that is in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. <clears throat> Can a person who is just a man be one with God, just Adam's race, just a regular man can could could anyone be one with God? Could anyone say, "I and my Father, the Heavenly Father, are one"? None but Jesus. Yes, Amen. Now the Jews understood perfectly the implications of what Jesus said. <clears throat> John chapter ten, verse thirty: "I and my Father are one." Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't say, I'm God. Yeah. That's right. Or did he? He said, I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. They got it. They, mm -hmm. they got it. He's saying he's God. Well, yes, he is. Mm -hmm. So so those who say that Jesus is the Son of God but not God, well, this is just foolishness. Yeah. This right. just fool the, even the Jews saw that. They said mm -hmm. they understood what he was saying. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a discussion about this with a former co-worker uh, back in Indiana <clears throat> who was taught by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And this particular man is Mexican, and he has two sons. And we were talking about this matter of Jesus being the Son of God and being God. And I said, now, if your son Fernando moves to Ireland, does that mean he's Irish now? No, he's, he's still Mexican. Mm -hmm. I said, what if Fernando moves to China and he learns to speak Chinese? And Fernando marries a Chinese woman and becomes a Chinese citizen. Is Fernando now Chinese? No. Fernando's still Mexican. Why? Because... You are Mexican, and Fernando is your son. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same. This is what it means when we say Jesus is the Son of God. He's God. Right. He always was God. Right. He always will be God. That's Amen. what it means to be the Son of God. Amen. Jesus is divine. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we speak of the deity of Jesus. That's what we're saying, that Jesus is divine, that he is God, one of the three persons of the Godhead. Now, perhaps the most plain declaration that Jesus is God is spoken by God the Father himself. <clears throat> and it's important to also note that this was spoken after Jesus was made flesh, after he died, after he was buried and rose again, after he ascended up into heaven. Unto the Son, he saith, to the Son, not to the Word, like back in the beginning, no, this was said to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, what fellows is he talking about here? His fellow man. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because the word was made flesh, yeah, but right. he was anointed above his fellows. Mm -hmm. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth. That's the word that John told us about. Yeah, amen. And the heavens are the works of thy hands. Mm -hmm. Thy throne, O God. 
Now, any one of these texts alone should suffice to reveal Jesus' deity, but let's look at some more things from the Scriptures. And again, I'll present you with some more questions. Who laid down his life for us? Was it just a man that laid down his life for sin? Hereby, hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Mm -hmm. Now, think of the comfort and the joy that you receive like if, when, when you consider the Lord's table, when you consider that Jesus died for your sins. You think about where, where the love that you have for God is constrained by the fact that Jesus is divine. Mm -hmm. Because God gave himself for our yes. sins. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's that's the love of Christ constraineth us. <clears throat> Our God intercedes for us. Our God sent His Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Our God is our High Priest. Our God bore our sins and died for us. Our God rose from the grave and ascended to heaven. Now you replace Jesus with just an ordinary man from Adam's race and all of the powers taken out of the Gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In particular here, the constraint of divine love would be absent. Yes. Now, how could God first love us if Jesus is not also God? <clears throat> this is the constraining love that John wrote about and that songs are written about. In particular, I thought of this love, this uh, song, And Can It Be That Thou My God Wouldst Die For Me? Or And Can It Be That I Should Gain an Interest in My Savior's Blood? Now, I want to, that word interest, it doesn't mean I'm interested in that. I'm curious. It means dividend, that kind of interest. Yeah. Profit. Can it be that I profit from my Savior's blood? Well, the, I believe it was Brother Charles Wesley wrote the song. He saw that divinity died for us. Yeah. Our God died yeah. for us. Amen. Amen. I want to look at this prophecy of David in the 110th Psalm that is quoted often in the New Testament scriptures, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now for hundreds of years, no doubt, men wondered about this text. And uh, the Lord asked the Pharisees about this, <clears throat> who were the experts on the scripture. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He knew, he knew the scriptures that the son of David would be the Christ. That's a proper answer. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou in my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Now it's not right for the father to call the son Lord. Mm -hmm. A father doesn't call his son Lord. The son calls his father Lord. Yeah. Well, as was usually the case, Jesus was answering the fools according to their folly, for this psalm was not a conversation between David and his son. It was a conversation between the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, on the day of Pentecost, Peter quotes this and opens this up unto us. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom he crucified, mm -hmm. both Lord and Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So again here, the Father declares the Son to be Lord with a capital L. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest yeah. in the flesh. There it is, Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Justified in the Spirit. Spirit bore witness to 